All right, in this video, we're going to do simultaneous equations, uh, but we're going to use Kramer's rule and the inverse matrix process, or an inverse matrix process, on uh, the same equation, set of equations. So we're going to find the intersection of these two lines, and it's 2x plus 3y equals 12, x minus 5y equals 10. When I was a young man, very young, um, still in college, uh, I didn't didn't have Kramer's rule really memorized or the inverse matrix process really kind of stuck in my head. And uh, I blew an interview. And and so I make it a point to, to teach this to all my kids, Kramer's rule and the inverse matrix process before they leave uh, in Algebra 2 and in, in pre-calc because, heck, I mean, if, had I known this, I would have gotten a job that paid very well and probably moved up the ladder although now I'm a teacher and I enjoy that too but but uh, you know knowing this stuff opens doors for you and so here we go so the first thing you need to do is uh, you need to have a little determinant review so a determinant is uh, let's say you had a matrix a b c d the determinant for that would be you just basically cross them AD minus, and then you cross the other way, CB. And you always go in that order. So down and right, and then up and right. So AD minus CB. So that's how you find the determinant. So that's the first thing. Now, Kramer's rule and I'll set this up for you in just a second, but Kramer's rule basically says this. If you take this determinant, and I'm going to call it x, and divide it by the main determinant, uh, that will give me x. And likewise, if you do the same with y, you find this determinant of y divided by the main determinant, you get y. And so... Uh, let's go back and let me show you how to set those matrices up. So that's kind of the only really hard part of this is setting these up. That was just a little too far up. So we'll head on back. Okay, so what we do then is uh, you set up the main determinant. We'll call it DET for the main determinant. The main determinant, oops, and I was going to do... It's good to use the matrix absolute value symbol. That that shows uh, that absolute value symbol shows that we're finding the determinant of a matrix. And so the main determinant would be negative ten minus three, which is negative thirteen. And then we find this determinant of of the x values. And how you do that is you take this 10 and this 12, or 12 and 10, excuse me, and we're going to place it and place the numbers for x. So we would have 12, 10, 3, negative 5. And so if you find the determinant of that thing, we'd have negative 60 minus 30. And so negative 60 minus 30 is negative 90. So that's the determinant of x. The determinant of y then is due to do that same thing with the 12 and the 10, but put it in place of the y. So determinant of y would be, so we'll leave, let me go back up a little bit so you can see what I got. 2, 1 will stay the same. But now instead of this 3, negative 5, we'll put the 12, 10 in there. And so, again, if you find the determinant of that, that would be 20 minus 12. Yep, 20 minus 12, which is 8. And so there's my three determinants. I've got a determinant of x, a determinant of y, and a main determinant. And so if we just go ahead and divide those, so if we so x would equal the determinant of x divided by the main determinant. So the determinant of x was uh, eight 
or see, that's y, excuse me, determinant of x is negative 90, and the determinant, main determinant, was negative 13. So 90 over 13 is your x value. y value is the determinant of y over the main determinant, and that was the 8 over negative 13, and so that's just it. It's 8 over 13 negative. And so those are your two answers. The, the beauty of this whole thing is uh, you're used to solving simultaneous equations where the answers come out nice. Like the answer is 2 and 1 or 0 and 5 or something like that. With Kramer's rule, you can have really ugly solutions. And it, and it works out pretty simply. All right, so, so let's take the same problem. And uh, let me show you a different process so we can compare the two. And they're, they're just beautiful. I, I love them both. All right, a quick review. Um, the identity matrix, you know, if you've never seen some of this, you might take a look at identity matrix but, and what that means. But 1, 0, 0, 1 is essentially like having a 1 um, in a 2 by 2 matrix. You know, a 3 by 3 would be 1, 0, 0. You know, here's the identity matrix for a 3x3. Three three. And so, you know, it, it's a diagonal length of 1s with everything else being a 0. Now, um, the inverse of a matrix, so those are that's the identity. The inverse looks like this. So if you had a matrix, we'll call it A, and we had a matrix, and we're just going to have it all later, letters, A, B, C and D, okay, the inverse of that matrix is 1 over the determinant of that matrix, so A, B, C, D, times you flip, you flip the A and the D around. So the D would go here, the A would go here, and you change signs on the C and the B. Okay, I'm not going to explain why that works because I'm more concerned with just working you through this process. But, but definitely look that up. You know, how do you invert a matrix? What does what do you do with that? And so that's the formula for it. Um, if you wanted to take it one step further, that uh, would be one over. If you remember your determinant, A D minus C B, and then times D negative B negative C A. And so that is the inverse of a matrix formula for a 2 by 2. It's different for a 3 by 3 and on up the line, but uh, that'll get us started. So the first thing we do is we want to convert this um, entire equation to a set of matrices. And so if you think about multiplication of matrix, you could uh, basically factor it out. And so it looks like this. And so you'd have 2, 3, 1, negative 5 times x, y equals 12, 10. And so you can see where, the, you know, take a look at that and make sure you know where I got all those numbers. Uh, but if you multiply these back through and you took, let me put my pen down for just a second. If you took 2 times x plus 3 times y, you know, that is going to uh, get you back to the where we started if you multiply these two matrices together right here. So I'm basically dividing them out. But if you multiply them back together, you'll get the equation we have above. Okay, so, the, so we've got this matrix. So basically we have this matrix A times x, y equals 12 over 10. Well, not 12 over 10, but the matrix 12, 10. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the inverse of that. And if you take the inverse times A, you're going to get the identity matrix. And then we'll take that, whatever you do on the left side of the equation, you do the, on the right side of the equation. So we'll take the inverse of A times 12, 10. The matrix 1210. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Well, first off, we need to find the inverse of the matrix. And so the inverse of this matrix, and I don't like green, so we'll do black here. Now, if you remember the formula, we're going to take the determinant of that main matrix. So A inverse is equal to 1 over, and if you remember from last time, it was 13. I'm not going to show my, my work. You just have to backtrack to about two minutes or so in the video to find where I found that determinant. It's negative 10 minus 3. We've already found it once. And then you invert it by flipping the 2 and the negative 5 around and changing the signs on your, on your 1 and your 3. And so if we go ahead and do the scalar multiplication there, your inverse matrix would be negative 5 over negative 13, which would make it positive, and uh, negative 3 over negative 13, which is positive, and negative 1 over 13, which is when we multiply, we get positive, and then we end up with negative 2 thirteenths. And so there is your inverse matrix, 5 thirteenths, 3 thirteenths, 1 thirteenth, and negative 2 thirteenths. So to save some time, I went ahead and wrote it, wrote it out. And so what I did is I multiplied our original equation by our inverse of A. So A inverse here, right here. Here's my original equation part. Here's my A inverse times the 1210. So we'll use the multiplication of matrices and go ahead and multiply these out. And so what you'll notice is, is pretty cool. So if you take 5 thirteenths times 2, you get 10 thirteenths plus, uh, so, you go over, so you go over and down, so then it would be 3 thirteenths times 1, which is 3 thirteenths. And then you keep working and you do, and you do uh, go over a column and you take 5 thirteenths again times 3, which is 15 thirteenths. And you go over and down, so you do this 3 thirteenths again, I'll mark it, times negative 5, which is negative 15 thirteenths. And you see, it probably start to see the pattern go uh, working here. So now you move down to column 2, or row 2, excuse me. So 1 thirteenths times 2 is 2 thirteenths. 1 thirteenths times, uh, so you go over and down, sorry, negative 2 thirteenths times 1 is negative 2 thirteenths. And uh, then you move over to the second column, bottom row, 1 thirteenths here again, times 3 is uh, 3 thirteenths. And then over to 2 thirteenths times negative 5 is uh, positive 10 thirteenths. Okay, and then you'd still have the rest, x, y, and we'll, and, and we could go ahead and multiply this also on this side, and then we'll do some simplifying. So 5 thirteenths times 12 is 60, 60 thirteenths. And then 3 thirteenths times 10 is plus 30 thirteenths. And then you go down to the second row, and 1 thirteenths times 12 is 12 thirteenths. And then negative 2 thirteenths times 10 is negative 20 thirteenths. Negative 20 thirteenths. So there we did our multiplication video is getting kind of long, but I think it's pretty cool. So if you notice then, if you check this out, 10 thirteenths and 3 thirteenths is 13 thirteenths. And 15 thirteenths minus 15 thirteenths is 0. So we've got our matrix shaping up pretty well here. And then if you go negative 2 thirteenths to 2 thirteenths, that's 0. And then and then another 13 thirteenths. And then times x, y. And then this would equal 90 thirteenths. 
and uh, negative 8 thirteenths. Oh, that looks familiar using the multiplication of a matrix. And so you've got the identity matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, 1 times xy and equaling 90 thirteenths and negative 8 thirteenths. And I got a little carried away. And if you took 1 times x and 0 times y, you'd get x. And then 0 times x and 1 times y, you get y. So if you multiply the identity times xy, you just end up with x xy, the matrix xy. And it equals 90 thirteenths over negative 8 thirteenths. And so x is 90 thirteenths. Uh, y is negative 8 thirteenths. And again, we found the same answer. It's just kind of a cool process. It takes a little longer than Kramer's rule, but uh, just love the beauty of it. So hope this helps you kind of see some uses for the inverse matrix and uh, uh, Kramer's rule and the determinant. And I'll see you next time.